raised your issue, amplified your voice, questioned the Delhi Babu's high-handedness. And today, it's a big win for lakhs of Delhiites. Days after our relentless campaign, your voices have been heard. The Delhi High Court has come to the citizens' rescue and has ordered that old cars that were seized by the transport department will be released within a week. Now, batting for Delhiites, the High Court has called for cars to be released on an undertaking by petitioners that they will not ply on the roads of the national capital. The High Court has also slammed the Aap Ki Sarkar, saying that we are not living in a dictatorship. Now, talking tough with the AAP government, the High Court said the transport body's order caused chaos and confusion and that no law allows seizure and non-release of vehicles. It has also set a two-week deadline for submitting the undertaking. Meanwhile, the Transport Commissioner has said that he hasn't seen the court order yet. The High Court's order comes just days after the Delhi government halted the scrappage drive. And now we here at Mira now demand action against the Delhi Babus for not paying heed to the citizens' pleas and carrying on with the illegal drive, for harassing and harrowing the citizens, for ignoring their pain. Will the erring Delhi Babus be booked? Will they be held accountable for harassing the citizens? Will they pay for the damage to the properties? We will continue to ask these questions here until the Delhi government acts on this. Now, earlier, the Delhi Transport Minister, Kailash Gehlot, talked tough with his colleagues and issued orders to the Transport Department to stop seizing and subsequently scrapping cars that are parked along the roads and outside the houses of citizens. The Transport Minister labelled the actions as invasive and has directed the Transport Commissioner to frame a policy after consulting the government. But most significantly, we would like to highlight a very important aspect of this brazen, absolutely unlawful drive by the Transport Department. The very NGT order, which is often quoted by the department to defend its actions, does not sanction seizure of vehicles. The NGT order clearly says that vehicles beyond the end of life span must be towed and fined and not impounded. But the transport department has gone ahead and done so with thousands of vehicles. Even the High Court, while granting relief to the petitioner, cleared the air regarding a National Green Tribunal order of 2015 that had ordered that the end of life vehicles could not be parked in public places. Now, the High Court said the Delhi Transport Department had distorted the original order and that there was no law that was passed by any lawful authority that prohibits the keeping of such a car which the petitioner and his family deeply desire to keep. The Transport Department had impounded various cars which were more than 10 or 15 years old, be it diesel or petrol respectively, after an NGT order which had ordered that these cars need to be scrapped. Today, however, the Delhi High Court has allowed that these cars be released after an undertaking is given by the owners that they will not be plied or parked in public spaces in the NCT of Delhi. Making very strong observations, the Delhi High Court even questioned the move of the concerned authority in impounding these cars from outside the houses of owners. The court even said that this is not a dictatorship. There are elaborate guidelines that have been put in place with regard to the release of these particular vehicles, and it has been stated that cars that have been registered in Delhi require an NOC and the cars will be released in accordance with the law. Cars outside uh, the National Capital Territory, those which are registered outside Delhi, will be transferred to the bordering regions from where they can be picked up. The undertaking is clear that they have to say that there will be no plying of these cars or parking of these cars. However, there were cars that were picked up from right outside the residence of owners and that was a grievance that was brought out 
before the Delhi High Court. While a detailed order is still awaited, elaborate guidelines have been put in place and the spirit in which uh, the law is to be implemented is something that was raised before court as well. Let's not forget that the transport minister in Delhi and uh, the transport department were in a certain uh, divergence of opinion because the transport minister had issued an office memo which was not followed by the transport department. This was something that was put out before the Delhi High Court, which has, as we said, granted huge relief to vehicle owners. Now, when it comes to the damages that were caused to the vehicles in the process of towing them away, the petitioners demanded compensation towards repairing those. While rightfully claiming a violation of their fundamental rights, the petitioners said that the transport department should face the court-ordered probe for its Caesar drive as it took away cars without following any due process laid down by the law. I would, I would definitely ask uh, them and request them to stop the tussle between the government minister and the officers, first of all, because due to their tussle, the, uh, as you are aware today, uh, the Mr. Gahlot, the Minister of Transport Department, Delhi, has today came up with another uh, notice to the respective officers there in the Transport Department, uh, asking them to follow the SOPs, that is standard operating procedures, and, and other guidelines, which, which has been laid down perfectly in the NGT order, as well as in the Supreme Court orders. But actually, in the ground, in the zero ground level, it is not being implemented properly. The, the officers there in the transport department go in their own wish and their own way, as though they are acting as in hand and glove with the scrappers, ma ma mafia, actually. Very actually. In fact, in my case, a case property has been, you know, literally snatched out without giving any prior notice or following any SOPs. It, is. it has been, uh, I think, I think there has been some connivance, uh, you know, at a level of uh, government and, and, and the scrapping agencies. They simply took advantage of the Supreme Court and NGT order uh, on the old vehicles, uh, you know, which are about 10 years and 15 years of age. Now, in order to take advantage of that, you know, they started, uh, I mean, picking these vehicles and say that, you know, since it is, it is, uh, it is no more valid license. Uh, you know, it will be taken away and there is no other way but only to scrap it. But to scrap it after, uh, uh, number one, uh, how you can take a vehicle without a notice? So none of the Delhi residents have been given, uh, you know, a week's notice minimum, uh, you know, before their vehicles were taken away. So you actually don't get a chance to, uh, you know, to show your papers, uh, to actually show whether whether you have a valid RC or not whether you have sufficient space for parking a vehicle inside your premises or not. All right, let me take this to my guests uh, and ask them what their perspective is and understand this issue better. I'm joined by Dr. Jayajit Bhattacharya, who is the president of the Center for Digital Economic Policy Research. Uh, welcome, Dr. Jayajit. And Kushan Mitra, automotive journalist, also joins us tonight. Thank you, gentlemen, for talking with Mirror now. Dr. Bhattacharya, you know, you've been um, very vocal about uh, your concerns on this uh, order that the NGT had given long back in 2014-15. And today, of course, the High Court order has come in favor of uh, the people of Delhi NCR who have been, uh, you know, having uh, quite a harrowing experience when it comes to the scrappage policy. First of all, your views on what the Delhi High Court said today. I think um, that view is uh, very welcome because uh, you can't simply snatch away property from people. In fact, uh, under Article 19 and 31 of the Constitution, right to property was a fundamental uh, right. And uh, it is up to me to decide how I will use my vehicle. Uh, I may put a garden inside my vehicle for all that I matter, as long as I'm following the court order and not putting the vehicle on the road and I'm not plying the vehicle. It is not acceptable that you snatch away things from my home, uh, which are my property, 
It may have been a gift from my parents or from my grandparents. It may be a family heirloom. And therefore, I have the right to be able to hold on to my property. And uh, th there's absolutely no basis for uh, the enforcement authorities to snatch away property in this manner. It almost reminds me of um, uh, of the what the loan sharks have been doing, where they harass a person, they chase them, and the government uh, sneers down on them and the court sneers down on them that they should not be chasing up uh, the, the loan takers and harass them. But that's exactly what the government itself is doing in this particular case. So clearly it's not acceptable and I really welcome the High Court's order on this particular uh, matter. But having said that, I think the, the whole policy itself needs to be revisited of not allowing vehicles above the age of 10, which are diesel and petrol vehicles above the 15, to be applied on the Delhi roads, because I really don't see any data which supports this policy. Um, you know, within these 10 years, two of the years where um, the vehicles were not able to run at all because of COVID. So essentially, after eight years, you're saying a vehicle stops functioning. There is no such precedence anywhere else in the world. And uh, it really needs to be looked at as to why such a policy is being adopted. If it's an issue of pollution, then there is an extensive pollution checking infrastructure which had been put into place and the vehicle just needs to meet the pollution norms. So one is really perplexed as to why this policy exists in the first place. Okay, Kushan Mitra, um, you know, 2014-15 is when uh, the NGT had given out this order uh, of uh, end-of-life vehicles. Uh, but help us understand, did they mention anything about those who are flouting this uh, rule, these guidelines that have been put in place? And also, there's been a lot of debate about what is considered as a public place when it comes to parking your vehicle, because uh, there have been several cases in Delhi NCR where uh, uh, cars have been parked outside people's houses and those have also been towed away without a prior notice. Uh, help us understand the difference, the difference between, uh, you know, how, how it's defined, this whole public space concept. Okay, so first and foremost, you have to understand any parking is a public space until you're parked inside your house or on your own property. Property that you don't own is a public space. So if I park, like my car is parked outside my house, that is a public space. I do not own it unless it's a gated colony and um, like you have in a gated colony, you could argue that it's not a public space because the space is owned by the society. Um, so that's there. Uh, there was no part in the 2015 order that mandated the towing or taking away of old cars. So keep in mind, they were just prohibited from running on the streets of the NCR and not just old cars, old two-wheelers, uh, tractors, whatever you have. Um, for example, the fire department in Delhi had to take uh, special permission to run their diesel fire engines beyond 10 years of age. That said, I think the policy does need a relook, uh, as uh, Dr. Matichari said, because uh, you have to understand since 2015, the norms have also changed. Now you have Bharat State 6 norms. Diesel vehicles that run on Bharat State 6 have much, much lower emissions than Bharat Stage 4 vehicles. And there is no clarification on these norms for electric vehicles that do not pollute at all. I mean, you still lose your. Um, registration after 15 years. So I think uh, the legislature has to intervene over here and get some rules in. And yes, uh, there, if a vehicle is fit to run, it should be allowed to operate. If it you know, passes a vehicle fitness test, if it passes a pollution test, you could have a 10-year-old diesel car from a luxury brand that pollutes and is fitter to run than a commercial vehicle that is only two years old. So um, we don't have fitness tests in India. We have to start a fitness test regime because at the end of the day, there is a cost to producing an environmental cost, a carbon cost to producing a new vehicle. If a, a lightly run old vehicle is actually better for the environment than you know making a whole new car. And of course, there are the economics of that as well, which we discussed when you were running your campaign. And thank you so much for running this campaign. 
I'm glad uh, Kushan Mitra citizens like you are, um, uh, you know, appreciating this effort by Mirror Now because we here, of course, will continue to ask these questions and raise the voices of citizens. But Dr. Bhattacharya, um, you know, one of the primary reasons that uh, this uh, that has been given for this order has been uh, that it's going to reduce pollution. But have we seen that? We haven't seen that every year. You and I know. Uh, especially those who live in the Delhi NCR region know that we don't breathe clean air every day of our lives. Our health has deteriorated and how much of this can really contribute, uh, uh, you know, to reducing the kind of pollution that the Delhi NCR region sees? You know, um, exactly what Mr. Mitra just mentioned, um, a very powerful set of arguments that actually the pollution level will be going up. It'll be going up because you're manufacturing new cars and then you're destroying uh, perfectly good cars. And there is uh, significant pollution when you destroy perfectly good cars. Uh, there is a lot of pollutants inside the car. And, um, you know, as I said, you, know, you look at the practice of other nations, uh, which are advanced economies, uh, when they need to dispose of the vehicle, they actually renew the vehicle and sell it off to other countries and they actually export it. And that's preserving economic value. Uh, in the calculation that we did, uh, we see that there is a 2300 crore per annum of economic value being destructed because of this policy. There are 3 lakh scooters that will be taken off the road and 1 lakh um, four-wheelers that will be taken off the road. And if you put a conservative cost to both of these, it turns out to be a 2300 crore of uh, value loss. In terms of pollution, it's almost a mockery because there has uh, obviously been absolutely no dent on the pollution. And that's because um, are these vehicles polluting? That's the first question. Uh, has there been a fitness regime? There is a fitness regime for commercial vehicles. And as Mr. Mitra just mentioned a little while ago, uh, we need to have a fitness regime for the vehicles. And people are, are, are putting in CNGs. And, um, and, and we know that the CNG vehicles are extremely uh, less polluting, almost negligible pollution. Same with electric vehicles where they, where they just do not have any pollution. And also keep in mind that when you bought a car in 2012 or 2013, you assume that you're going to keep it for the rest of your life or whatever time period that you thought of. If to, in 2015, somebody comes and snatches yeah. away that car and tells you that in 10 years time, you cannot have that car in seven more years, you cannot own that vehicle. That is snatching away public, I mean, private property. And um, uh, uh, if you look at the, the fact that uh, there are a lot of people who retired and they bought their last vehicle, assuming that they will use it to go to the hospital to you know live for the rest of their life, those vehicles have been snatched away. Now, how do you expect such pensioners to now go and buy another vehicle? Also, if you look at the visuals that you're showing, these cars yeah. that are being smashed, they look per, in, in perfectly good conditions. I have seen uh, very expensive uh, luxury cars being taken away and smashed just because they cross the age of 10 years. Now, these are clearly not scientific parameters. One has to ask, what is the evidence based on which such a policy has been adopted? And you know, I can go back and say that, look, I found that uh, a 30-year-old house uh, is unsafe. And I've seen two such houses collapsing. And therefore, I'll adopt a policy where I'll go and demolish every single 30-year-old house because I think that's the right thing to do. And I'll save lives because of that. No, it is as ridiculous a policy as that. If you find um, you know, some vehicles which are very old parked mm -hmm. on the side, pick up those vehicles and, and through a proper process. But you can't randomly you know, correlate a, a car that is parked on the side, which is not working, by saying that all 10 year and above car or all 15 year and above car uh, should be scrapped. There is there is absolutely no correlation. I mean, tomorrow I can yeah, say yeah. that there is a car that was found to be yeah, polluting. Exactly. It was a white colored yeah, car. You know, and is... therefore, I'll take away all the white colored car in the, yeah. uh, in, in the capital city. There's absolutely no correlation between the policy and the facts on the ground. Yeah, which is what the concern has been of the citizens, you know, that there has been no prior notice and there has been uh, no clarity on, uh, you know, which car is fit to be taken, which car is fit to be plied on the road. And Kushit Mitra, therefore, it leads me to my final question to both of you. What is the solution? Because nowhere in the world have uh, we seen the age of the car being the basis of 
uh, you know, being scrapped. Like you said, there should be a fitness certificate. Do you think emissions can be a basis of, uh, you know, categorizing vehicles uh, as to their contribution to pollution and therefore they should be scrapped? And what are the other solutions we can look at when it comes to, uh, you know, dealing with and uh, really treating these old vehicles? So I think when the Supreme Court and the NGT passed their orders, they were trying to get Bharat Stage 3 emission vehicles off the road. Um, but we have gone past that. Most Bharat Stage 3 vehicles are off the roads in at least the NCR for sure. We have to have legislation over here. New vehicles that run on Bharat Stage 4 and particularly Bharat Stage 6 uh, emission norms are extremely clean in terms of their pollution. You also need to have fitness tests for all vehicles. You need, and but this has to be legislated. For example, to just today, the government of India, the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways, introduced the Bharat New Car Assessment Program, the uh, crash testing for new vehicles. Similarly, I hope uh, Mr. Gadkari uh, looks at a uh, fitness regime for vehicles so that even a three year old, four year old car can be tested uh, in the West. In particular, in countries like the UK, you need to have a fitness certificate every two years. In Germany, you need to have a fitness certificate. If your car is fit to run, if it is safe to run, it doesn't pollute too much, you get a certificate, tax certificate for two years. Uh, and then you got to test it again after two years. Um, maybe once a car is 15 or 20 years old, you need, might need to get it tested every year. So it may not be convenient. And the government has already spoken about this, but they haven't really come out with any policy as yet. Um, and this will again have to go through the legislative route. I hope the government does look at this because uh, some people might want to keep their cars for sentimental reasons. Uh, as Dr. Patacharya said, pensioners, for example, they might only run their car for uh, 10 or 15 kilometers every week. But you can't expect a 75-year-old man to go into his pension and buy a new car because the government says you can't run it. So you have to look at yeah. all of that. So yeah. yes, if that pension or, or even younger new... people, you know, even younger people, for example, if I, I don't want to sell my car, I don't want to buy a new car. I don't want to spend my money on that. I don't have the wherewithal to buy a new car. I want to spend it on the other priorities, the other goals in my life. Why should I? So this, no, this yeah. really needs to be looked at. Of course, we'll have to look at a better policy. And of course, at a time of climate change and the ripple effects of it being felt everywhere across the world. I'm so sorry, Dr. Bhattacharya. I really have paucity of time. I'll have to wrap this up here. But uh, thank you very much to both of you for joining us tonight and sharing your perspective on Delhi High Court's order on the scrappage policy, especially in the Delhi NCR region. Thank you so much. Thank Moving you, on, on Nation...